Praise the Lord. I know the children know what to do already. Train a child the way they should go. So children's service are open. I see the children moving already. God bless you. Good morning, everyone. And happy Thanksgiving. Do we all have something to thank God for? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. We really give him thanks for everything he has done for us. I'm especially giving thanks because I see a great man in the house, Brother Yuming. You are welcome. I'm so glad to see him. Amen. Amen. Today, I just, I am so grateful for the privilege the Lord has given to all of us to live through this pandemic. But I want to give God the glory for being my father and being the God that he has been to me and all of us. I also want to thank God for the shepherd of the house, his family, for their sacrifice for the sake of the kingdom. All the leaders in the house, I thank you for everything that you have put up with for the ministry to continue. God bless you. I also want to give a shout out to my youth. Hallelujah. Today is Youth Sunday. They have been awesome. They are the wind beneath my wings. Amen. And I also want to thank all of you, our uh, visitors, those who have been coming to the house and those who have been worshiping with us online. God bless you. We love you. Shall we bow before the Lord in prayer? Most gracious Father, giver of life, we thank you. Father, as we come before you this morning, we are coming as hollow vessels looking forward for you to fill us. Father, I yield myself to you. Hide me behind the cross. And use me for your glory. In your glory alone. Amen. 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 Brother Moses have really given us a little glimpse of what we need to do already. As he said, Today is Stewardship Sunday. So today is like we are celebrating three things. Stewardship Sunday, Thanksgiving, and Youth Sunday. In the book of Haggai, we read about the Ezra. They have come back from their bondage. And in this bondage, they did not come back home empty-handed. Just like Israel, when they came out of Egypt, they never came out of Egypt empty-handed. And so, when they came, God was expecting something from them. Because everything that they came home with, it came from him. But obviously, they were not doing what God wanted them to do. In the book of Haggai 2, 5, the word of God stated, This is what I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt and my spirit remained among you. Do not fear or do not be afraid. They came from exile. The temple was being built, but they were not doing what they were supposed to do. Build the temple, but they were using the money to build their own mansions and dwell in there. That means they were being bad stewards. I thank God that we, are not, we have not been bad stewards. Amen? Amen? Throughout this pandemic, I want to thank God for all of you that you have contributed your finances so these doors continue to be open. Yet, we need more work need to be done. Like Brother Moses said, we need to take our pledge cards, what is going to cause us not to be able to give generously? 
We are not different from those that the Bible was talking about. Fear. Fear is a torment. Fear can hinder us. Fear can cause us to have ungrateful heart. And fear can cause us not to be good stewards. Fear of what? Maybe fear of what people will say. You are being in America, those of us who are foreigners. You are being in America for all these years. What have you done home? You are being in America for all these years. Look at you. So maybe when they came back, they want to make a time, lost time. And things that they want to prove themselves that they did not, they were not lazy when they were there. Because guess what? When the Ezra were there, they were working. Hallelujah. And so with all the pandemic, with everything we have been through, I just came here to encourage us. Because we are doing what we're supposed to do already, but we need a little bit of encouragement. Amen? Amen? And so I want to encourage us that the God that established Israel is going to establish the church. Amen. You are the church. I am the church. Amen? Amen? He is going to establish us because all good and perfect gifts come from him. Hallelujah. And this is the reminder, because in verse 8 and 9, the Lord declares, For the silver and gold are mine, says the Lord. And the glory of this place, this present house, will be greater than the former house. What is he talking about? That the house that they knew, those of them who were there before the first temple was destroyed, he's telling them that the house that he wanted them to build, this is what he want them to know. That house will carry the glory of God. Amen. 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 And that house is going to be more greater than the first one. Why? Because wherever the glory of God is, look at what he said. He said, in this place, I will grant peace. Hallelujah. Amen. When the glory of God is in a place, there is the peace of God that comes upon that place. When the glory of God is upon your life because you do what is right by God, there is peace in your life. Amen. Amen? But when we don't do what is right by God, we don't have peace. Peace is not when there is no absence of war. This peace is talking about here, peace means wholeness, good health, abundance of life. How many of us don't want abundance of life? We all do, right? And so this is the recipe. As we consider the stewardship, this stewardship Sunday, please be prayerful about what you're going to give. Give generously. Give wholeheartedly. And give a reasonable amount. Some of us, we can forgo our, our morning coffees for a month or two. And save the money because this work that is ahead of us is a huge work. We need the funds to be able to keep the doors open and to also affect other ministries. We are not called to church ourselves. We are called to reach out to the world. It will take money to do so. Hallelujah. So I thank you all. I'm not going to dwell on that too much because I know you are givers in the house. If you believe that, say amen. amen. Thank you. That means it will come to pass. Yes. Amen. amen. I thank God for, for you already for saying that because like um, David, although he has not seen the temple, he started giving God thanks. So I give God the thanks already. Amen. amen. Now, I will want you, if you all have your Bibles or your tablets or whatever you have to turn to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 11. The second scripture from 24 going. I will just dwell on 24 and to 26. And I read, And when he has given thanks, he broke the bread, and when had given it, he said, This is my body, which, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. He took the cup, 
and said, This is the new covenant in my blood. Drink it in remembrance of me. Brothers and sisters, I would like to welcome you to the greatest thanksgiving. In this thanksgiving, the table is called the table of grace. The host's name is called Jesus. And the main cause is his body. The drink is his blood. When he started to give this greatest dinner, what we call the Lord's Supper or the communion, and I will borrow the words from our pastor last week. He said, we do things that we do not understand. And when we don't have understanding of what we do, sometimes we don't do it wholeheartedly because we don't have understanding. Jesus was going to leave his church. This is the temple that Haggai is talking about, the latter temple. It's not a physical temple. It is a spiritual temple where his spirit will dwell on the inside of us. Hallelujah. And so Jesus will be intentional. He did not come out to say, I am leaving you this treasure. But he called them to do something in front of them so they will all see. They will, I find out that our brain will retain 80% of what we see and we do. If you can see it, that's why children need interaction things. There are more than what we, read, we will read or we will hear from somebody. Hallelujah. And so the word of God says, he took the bread and he broke it. His eyes was not on where he was going, although he knew that he was going to be the lamb. He knew that he was going to be the one whose head is going to be on the chopping board. But yet, he was giving thanks. Hallelujah. So he gave thanks. And he broke the bread. Why is he operating in this fashion? Because in our, our system, in the world system, when we receive, that's when we say thank you, right? That's how the world system is. But that is not how his kingdom operates. The kingdom of God does not operate with the principles of the kingdom of earth. And so that's why when he came, he was literally all the time against what the Pharisees were doing. Because they were operating in a system that is not conducive with his system where he came from. He will let them know in the book of John chapter 8, verse number 3, and I read, And he said to them, You are from beneath, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. Hallelujah. Amen. And so here, he is leaving them with something. Although they are seeing it as just a bread that he, is bro he was breaking, it was not just a bread. It's symbolic of his body. I will ask you all a question. If somebody come to you and said to you, your wife need a heart. So I want to take your heart and give it to your wife. Will you do it? Because we all know that we have only one heart. We hear about kidney transplant. But we never hear anybody saying, I will give my heart to my wife, so I will die. Unless the person's mind is not right. <laughs> or unless there's an accident. Amen? Everybody is laughing because it's true. Or you, you go into donated blood. And you know that when you are going there, they will drain every blood out of you. That means you're going to be dead. Will you go? But yet, he did it. This is the greatest thanksgiving. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the greatest thanksgiving. He offered himself. 
And so, building this ritual temple, that is you, that is me. He wanted to achieve this goal that is ahead of him. And so he will ask them to do something. He said, remember me. Do this in remembrance of me. So every time that we come here to eat the Lord's Supper, he's saying, do this in remembrance of me. What do we do in remembrance of him? And I'm so glad that you are thinking about that. You see, when we say we are remembering his life, his death, and his resurrection, and his return, he's giving us a chance to be able to be restored to the Father. Because God was not calling us for programs. He was calling us for a relationship. The relationship that was lost in the garden. He sent his son to come and die for us. So that he would bring us to the father. And so God is seeking for each and every one of us individually. To have a relationship with him. Because when this temple that you have. You have a relationship with the Father. His glory will dwell inside of you. He's not just seeking that. But the veil is torn. He's seeking a relationship with the church. His body. He's seeking that there will be a restoration of that relationship. He's seeking the re restoration of relationship with the Father to the world. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. And so these three areas, he's seeking for me and you individually for us to be restored. Amen. He's seeking his church to have the agenda of the kingdom of heaven. So that we'll be restored to the Father. And the world that is lost to come back. You see, that's why Jesus was giving thanks. Because finally, you have these 12. And you know he can try and trust them with this, that they can share it to the world. Lost brothers and sisters are finally coming home. He gave thanks. And he said, in doing this, remember me. How then can we be able to do the things that he's portraying for us? We will see that in verse 26 in 1 Corinthians 11. He said, for whoever, for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. He's expecting from us to proclaim who are we proclaiming it to? You have to learn how to proclaim. Learn the word for yourself. Because now, like I said, the veil is broken. You don't need a priest to tell you what to do. We have to proclaim the word of God to those around us. For them to know that Jesus saves. For them to know that there is salvation in the Lord. For them to know that there is hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. For them to know that there is resurrection. It doesn't matter what you are going through. You can come out in the name of Jesus. For the world to know that there is healing in the name of Jesus Christ. For the world to know that there is power in the name of Jesus Christ. He wants us to proclaim it, not keep it to ourselves. Hallelujah. While we are proclaiming it, the powers of darkness have to hear. That the cross has not lost its power. Because he gave us the victory. Amen. Hallelujah. And so we proclaim the word of God. For the powers of darkness. He said I will, build, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. When he talk about the gates of hell. He's not talking about gates. Physical gates. Because the gates. Hell don't have gates. Gates are symbolic. Of where. Uh, uh, dignitary or authorities they meet and they take plan what he's saying here is that the plot and the plans of the evil darkness 
of the evil realm will not stand against you. Amen. Amen. The plans and the plots of the evil one will not stand against you. Amen. Amen. Now, it's not just wanting us to stay there. Because you can understand what the cross did when you take the communion. He wants us to anticipate. He said, you doing this, you are declaring the death until he comes. Jesus is coming again. He will not give us everything that he said he will give us. And leave this part of the promise. He is coming back again. He's coming back for his church. Amen. A bride that have no spot on them. He's coming back again. That is why he was giving thanks. That you and me, we will be anticipating his return. Amen. We will not just live the life of a Christian. Just go our way, doing what we need to do without having that hope. Hope looking forward to see the cloud open. If we are still alive. To see him come in his glory. He will come back again. Hallelujah. And so when you know that he's coming back again. How do we prepare ourselves? He has invited us. He said as often as you eat this bread. And drink this cup. We do it every month. He never say every month, but we do it every month. But if you do it in your house, it's okay. As long as you are now, you are, you are reverence what you are doing. Hallelujah. So what are we supposed to do? Apart from anticipating, we are going to share. But before you share, the word of God said, if we eat it and we don't eat it right, we are just eating damnation upon ourselves. So it calls us to examine ourselves. If you judge yourself, the word of God says judge yourself. But that word judge there means examine yourself first. Let nobody examine you. Examine your heart. And see whether your heart is right with the Lord. And if your heart is not right, he will not throw you away. That table is a table of grace. He's waiting for you to accept that forgiveness. He forgives us our sins. Hallelujah. And when you are able to examine yourself and you confess your sins, he's able to forgive you. And so it's not just also examining yourself, but that word also means discern. So you know why you are sitting there in the pew and you examine yourself and you realize that you don't deserve this. You are unworthy servant. All of a sudden you look around and you see Uncle Joe also sitting in another pew. And then you realize that the grace that has been given to you has been given to Uncle Joe. Hallelujah. This is how you discern. Then you realize that the elite that sits in the front and those who are disadvantaged that sit at the back, they are all at the table. They are all eating from that same bread. It was only one bread. It was broken. And the hand that was clean, or the hand was, that was dirty, is passing on to the hand that is either dirty or clean. We all share. The cup was only one cup. And everybody was drinking from that same cup. So the one who brushed their teeth before they came to the house, or the one who did not, all drinking from the same cup. Filthy are we all. But he allowed everyone at the table. This is how we discern that it is the grace that he has bestowed upon us. That caused us to be invited. And so now we look at each other with respect. 
We look at each other with compassion. We look at each other with honor. And we all serve together. We share. We share the bread. Happy Thanksgiving. We share everything on the table together. So as we share, we are sharing in his suffering. In his suffering, that means you as the body, you will suffer. So when you are going through, I have to acknowledge some of you have been through so many challenges. We all have been there with you, pray with you, cry with you, and stand by you. He's calling us that we're not just sharing the good news, but we're also sharing the struggles of our brothers and sisters. We share their suffering together. And when there is joy, we all share together. Do this in remembrance of me. Hallelujah. He is counting on the church. If he will come, he said, this gospel shall be preached to the whole world before he will come. And so if he is going to return, like I said, we are anticipating his return. What are we doing so that this gospel will go to the uttermost part of the world? In this Thanksgiving spirit, I will ask you to really consider we have the university student visiting us a few weeks ago. We have got a letter from our pastor. Those of you who have been privileged to have a house and you can host somebody, be prayerful and invite somebody into your home. Just one day, get to know them and share the food on your table because he came from your father. Hallelujah. Those who have gifts that you can share with somebody, share because it does not, it does not belong to you. It came from the father. When he took that cup, when he took that bread, he acknowledged the source of the supply he had on the table. On this Sunday, it's you Sunday, so I will not leave you the youth. You are so privileged to grow up in a house like this. The word is being taught in this house. I want to say I congratulate you, the youth. I am so proud of you, and let's give them a hand. We salute you, we love you, and we are so proud of you the way you are growing in the things of God. 2019, we, we went to a retreat, and they had a little lesson upon stewardship, or how to manage money. And I've got the news that you guys are doing fantastic. You are contributing religiously. Even if it's a little, you are doing a good job. Thank God for your life. Thank God. Continue. Don't stay there. I declare the blessings of God upon your life. I declare the Lord's hand to rest upon you. I declare that you will grow in the things of God. I declare that the Lord will shine his face upon you. He will guide your steps and you will not be tossed from and through, but you will be planted strongly upon the rock, which is Jesus Christ. The Lord has blessed you. I will encourage all of you to be good leaders. Jesus was a good leader. When you look at this book, this book was written and it was dedicated to you. It was the effort of our own pastor and brother Wayne. When you read the book, it says it's dedicated to the youth. The youth. I encourage all of you to take the leadership class, the worship leaders workshop. Why am I saying that? 
Because today leaders can be tomorrow leaders tomorrow. If you are not being faithful now, you cannot be faithful tomorrow. We are grateful to have the gift that has been given to us. Take advantage of it. There is a platform that is being open for you to have a special session. And if that's approved, please go online and, and, and uh, register so that you can take that leadership class. So that you will lead, not just in this house, but wherever you go, you will lead faithfully. Amen. Hallelujah. In closing, I want to remind us that the best gift that the Lord Jesus gave to us is the life we have in us. Hallelujah. Therefore, he is coming for what he has given to us. He is coming back again. If the trumpet will, will, will sound today, are you ready? The best thanksgiving you can give to the Lord is give yourself. I give myself away so you can use me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So let us go into this Thanksgiving service, this Thanksgiving season, noting that he gave us the best Thanksgiving dinner. Amen. And not the things that he wants us to remember. Number one, do this in remembrance of me. Remember him. Number two, share. Share your faith. Be proud of being a saved Christian. And share your faith and your resources. Number three, anticipate. That is not just looking back at the cross, but looking forward for the one who is coming to take us home. May God bless us. Amen.